my friends, my name is Jess and welcome or welcome back to my channel, What's Fast Bedtime. Today I am bringing you my December wrap up. It's kind of like my November and December wrap up, but I only read one book in November, so it's pretty much just my December wrap up. <laughs> I unfortunately do not have any fun stats for you because I stopped tracking my book stats in the second half of the year and I haven't done a lot of wrap-ups but I did read 10 books in November and December which is a hell of a lot better than I did most months of 2021 so let's just dive right in and talk about them honestly I'm just gonna no I'm gonna go in order of like how much I liked them so worst book books first and then you'll have to wait in the end for my favorite books. So my least favorite book <laughs> that I read in December is kind of like a joke book. I probably shouldn't have even counted it but I didn't meet my Goodreads goal so who cares. And that is Dog People by Sandra Mueller. Um, This book uh, Jayla, Rachel and I read <laughs> together when we were in um, New York one day. We were just kind of like flipping through the pages in the bookstore and it was really cute at first. The concept of this book is like these people dress their dogs up as like what career they would have um, if they were a human. It really reminds me of, um, I can't think of her name. I think her uh, TikTok account is Pack of Potatoes or something like that. And she like makes up these fictional lives for what her dogs would be doing if they were humans. I've been thinking about what jobs my dogs would have if they were humans. And I got to share my theories because I think I'm fucking spot on. Joe is a girl boss. Joe works... Um, at an MLM pyramid scheme type of situation. And uh, she posts her paychecks on her IG stories. She goes live constantly. She's trying to recruit you. Tank um, owns a tow truck company. Now he's not super involved in the day to day, but every now and then you hear him yelling um, at people on the phone. This right here is a PE teacher, okay? She has a sweet spot for children, but you will not take her shit. You will run that mile. That's a mall cop. He wants to be tough so bad. He wants teenagers to respect him, but they never will. It's like one of my favorite accounts on TikTok. So you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Anyway, kind of a similar concept. Um, but as we were going through, they were some of them are cute, but then some of them were like really racist or like um, sexist. I just was like, oh, okay, we're going there. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> so I had mixed feelings about this. I gave it two stars. Um, it has very few ratings on Goodreads. I feel kind of bad like giving it a bad rating, but also it's like a bad book objectively. Like it's not a very nice book. I was hoping a book about dogs dressed up as career people would be a little bit more lighthearted, but alas, it was not. <laughs> Then my next least favorite book was probably The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I was really let down by this book. I ended up giving it two stars and it's probably my least favorite Grady Hendrix that I have read so far. I just expected a lot more from it, especially since it won the Goodreads like horror category choice awards. Like what? This was not, this was not it. <laughs> I don't know what y'all read, but it was not this book. So this book is basically following this main character who was the victim of this horrible slasher occurrence. Um, so she's a final girl and she's in this therapy group with all of these other final girls and they're like friends and they support each other and talk about their experiences and yada yada yada. They've been going to this therapy group for a really long period of time and they kind of want to converge and like go their separate ways. They think they're, they want to table it. They're done with it. And our main character, this really freaks her out, especially because she believes that they are starting to get targeted by somebody who wants them all gone, wants them all wiped out. And our main character is kind of like written off as being unstable. People People think she just is like out of touch with reality, paranoid, that kind of thing. So no one really believes her and she's just trying to figure out like how to prove to everyone what's going on and how to get them to believe her. And I thought the premise for this was good, but the execution was just not there. This was a really, really slow read for me. I Not a lot happened. I was really frustrated with the main character and all the other characters in this story. And also it was just like very far-fetched and out there. I just, and I didn't like the way it ended and it really wasn't like twisty turny fast paced. It was just like meh. So I gave this one two stars. I really didn't like it and I honestly wouldn't recommend it to anyone. <laughs> I just didn't think it was a very good book. Another book that I didn't absolutely love was in Too Deep by Daryl Banner. This was another book I read on my like adult romance bender. Basically, this is about this these two guys. One is a local in this Texas beach town and the other is a tourist there for like a good time and this Texas beach town is like known for being like a gay haven. <laughs> and our main character is like kind of introverted. He comes with his really extroverted friend who is really like pushing him to get out and be like more fun, I guess. I don't know. Um, but really he meets this guy who's a local in this town and kind of becomes fixated on it 
him and they start to talk and form a, a bond and a relationship and they really like each other but they're like what do we do this is just a weekend like this isn't a long-term thing even though we want it to be you know that kind of trope and it was cute and I liked the romance to some extent it felt like it was developed more than what you would think a like weekend long fling would be but I am not sure that it was believable like how much they were like in love with each other after only knowing each other for like literally 48 hours and that our main character was like willing to like quit his job and leave his apartment and like all this stuff for this this random man that he had just met two days ago. But that wasn't my biggest problem with this book. I One of my biggest problems with this book was the friendship between, I don't remember anybody's name, but our main character, the two tourists in the town, like him and his friend, his friend was like a dick to him. Like he was basically telling him that he like couldn't be himself and that he didn't like him as a, his self. He liked him. He wanted him to be like more fun and more outgoing and more this, more that, more the other thing and like really mean to him. And I just was not a fan of that. I thought that was really strange. Um, it was a very strange dynamic. And I just thought the writing was kind of corny. It wasn't the best kind of writing. And I just felt like, again, the relationship was a little underdeveloped. So this wasn't a favorite. It wasn't bad, but I think I like wanted more from it. Um, so I just gave it three stars. I just, you know, it was just okay. Next, I'm going to put the um, Villains Duology by V.E. Schwab. I read this for the Fantasy Series Book Club. To be fair, just as a little disclaimer, I did listen to both of these books on audio like in two days <laughs> and I think I like dozed off a little bit during the first one. So I think my rating was definitely affected by that, but... I, these just I don't think were the book for me you know these books basically follow these two guys who are friends in college and they believed that they could give people superpowers by kind of like bringing them to the edge of death and then reviving them and they did do that like effectively and it's this whole conversation about like good versus evil and there's elements of like found family and things but I just I don't know I, I'm not really like a superhero person in books, which, well, two of my favorite books in 2021 featured superheroes, but <laughs> they were more like a romance with like a superhero element, whereas this was like a superhero element and like nothing else. So I think that was my issue. And I didn't really like care about the characters a lot. I really just don't have any thoughts. Like these were very middle of the road three star rates for me, which I definitely is an unpopular opinion. These literally have like a 4.2 average rating on Goodreads. Everyone loves them. Um, and it very well could be that I just wasn't paying enough attention or I should have read them physically but for me personally I just didn't feel them they weren't my favorite like book they weren't my cup of tea if you will so unfortunately they're at the lower end of my list but I did love talking about them with everyone and I definitely think that I got more out of them because I did than I would have otherwise so if you're interested in everyone's thoughts everyone else liked it a lot more than I did you can check out our live show for the book club there and then next on the list I would probably put Horror Store by Grady Hendrix now all the rest of the books on this list are going to be four or five stars so I definitely liked this book and enjoyed it it just was like lower on on the list of the books that I did enjoy that I read in December. So this is a really unique book. It is a um, book formatted like an Ikea catalog that is set in an Ikea-like store. And we're following our main character who isn't very happy in her job, really wants to transfer, is just kind of like unhappy in life basically and she really thinks that her manager is going to bring her in to fire her that day but instead he asks her to work like an overnight shift because there's really weird things happening in the building people are breaking in there's like vandalism that shows up overnight and they're trying to figure out what's going on in this store so she agrees because he's gonna like pay her overtime and put in her transfer request and all that good stuff and then he asks like a couple other um employees to do so as well so they end up in this ikea overnight and this book gets wild it is creepy as hell this is like quintessential grady hendrix and that it is horrifying and gory and wild and wacky <laughs> and like really quirky <laughs> also at the same time and i really liked it it was a fun time it just like wasn't a favorite book and i think it's probably because it was so gory and so ridiculous that i had a hard time being like yeah this is it <laughs> like, most of the time i was like what is going on it was very bizarre but it was a lot of fun and it was a super unique read so I definitely would recommend if you are interested. Then next I would probably put The Holiday Hookup by Balin Crow. <laughs> this was just like a one-off novella that was like Christmassy that I read right around Christmas time and it was cute. <laughs> so for this kind of book like 
if I was reading critically, would not have enjoyed it because it's um, low-key about workplace sexual harassment. <laughs> our love interest kind of just like badgers our main character at work until he like agrees to go out with him, which is not cool and not something I would want to happen in real life. But in this fictionalized version of life in this book, I thought it was fun and cute. Take that as you will. But I did really enjoy this book and rated it four stars. It was just a really fun holiday themed Christmassy love story. And I have been in the mood for adult romances as I was talking about in my January TBR. So I definitely had a lot of fun with this one. It's cute and sweet. It's on Kindle Unlimited. So if you're looking for something next Christmas that you would like to read, I, I did really enjoy this one. <laughs> And then next on my list would probably be The Push by Ashley Audrain. I really liked this one. I gave it four stars. This is about this young mother who has a lot of difficulty forming a bond with her new child to the point where she actually thinks her new child is actually evil and a bad demonic person murdering people and causing havoc and chaos and horrible things to happen. <laughs> and her husband treats her like she's crazy and that she's imagining it, even though she's like trying to express like, I really think there's something off about our child. And so this is kind of like a paranoia psychological thriller in that you don't know if the mom is actually crazy and like has some kind of form of like, what's it called? Like postpartum depression, like PTSD from childbirth, or if her child is legitimately evil. So I thought this book was really good. I started reading it back in August and just finished it this month just because life, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. It really freaked me out a lot. I'm like, God help me. This is free uh, birth control. <laughs> I'm like, please do not make, let me have a child. I feel like this would happen to me. <laughs> Not really, but I'm like, oh my gosh, there's some very like graphic descriptions too of like breastfeeding and things that were like horrific, horrific. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is not a glowing endorsement for reproduction, but I thought it was really well done for what it was. I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend if you think it sounds interesting or you think you can handle it. <laughs> then the next four books that I'm going to talk about were all five stars, so I loved all of them and I'm trying to think of how I want to rank them exactly. I think at the bottom of my five star pile, I'm going to put Fake Out by Eden Finley. <laughs> I did rate this five stars. Yes. Do I have a problem? Maybe. <laughs> this is another adult romance and it is a very ridiculous premise. So our main character Maddox, he had this girlfriend in high school and he had a lot of trouble breaking up with her like every time he tried to break up with her she like wouldn't allow it and just pretended that it didn't happen um so finally he got so fed up and he didn't know what else to do and he told her he was gay <laughs> so that she would leave him alone um which problematic maybe but um anyway <laughs> So then his whole like hometown thinks that he's gay, even though he's supposedly not. He runs into his ex-girlfriend and she's getting married and she invites him to her wedding. And somehow he lies to her again and says that he has a boyfriend that he's going to bring. <laughs> So um, needless to say, he does not have a boyfriend. So he has to find somebody to be his fake boyfriend. And that's where Damon comes in. And Damon is Maddox's best friend's brother, which we love that trope as well. And Maddox like knows this hockey player and Damon is like this um, sports agent. So he agrees to introduce him, them. And so that's why he agrees to be his fake boyfriend. And he's just supposed to like go to the wedding with him and meet his parents and things. But then obviously they actually end up liking each other because it's a fake dating trope, obviously. This book is really cute. I really liked the romance a lot. Is it revolutionary? No. Is it a masterpiece? No. But was it a fun time? Yes. So I loved it. I gave it five stars. Next on my ranking of five star books that I read in December would probably be Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. Queen Leanne just has a way with writing that just sucks me in. I love it so much. Every book she writes, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Like, I just feel so engrossed in the story, you know? Um, this book, I think is, I'm kind of having an unpopular opinion because I don't think this is as popular as some of her other books, but this basically follows this family and their mother goes missing. It's these four siblings and they're trying to figure out what happened to their mother, like why she's missing, where she went, and if their dad is guilty. And two of them think their dad might be guilty and two are standing behind their dad. Throughout the book, we kind of 
flip back and forth through present and past and kind of like learning the nature of the relationship between the mom and her husband, as well as this very strange incident that happened where this young girl showed up on their doorstep and stayed with them for a couple months and then just disappeared. And they're trying to figure out if maybe that is also related to what happened to their mother. And I just really loved this book. This is like quintessential Leanne Moriarty suburban drama. Like it was so good. I just think I love her book so much because of the depth she puts into them. Like every single character in this book had such depth and such a personality and things that were also going in there on in their life other than this main thing with their mom which I just think makes the character so well-rounded and relatable and interesting and I really loved all of the like side plots with all of their like little like romances and domestic things that were going on like I just thought it was really cute the mystery was so good too I'm like I have no idea what the fuck is going on <laughs> which is perfect I really liked this book I thought it was really good so Five stars. And then almost in first place, but not quite, I would probably put Heated Rivalry by Rachel Reed. This is another adult romance book, and this is like a hockey romance book, and it is an enemies to lovers. Well, it's like enemies with benefits to lovers, <laughs> which is um, my favorite niche romance trope. Anyway, <laughs> this follows um, these rivals, Shane and Ilya, who are hockey players, and they like are known to hate each other on the ice. They're like the two best hockey players. They just have this like searing rivalry. But then behind the scenes, they um, hook up all the time. <laughs> It's not about feelings until it is about feelings and then it gets to be a little bit too much for them and they're like, what the fuck are we supposed to do with this? And it's great. I loved it. I fucking loved it. It was amazing. Five stars. But then probably my favorite book that I read in December was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave, which is a mystery thriller. It follows this woman whose husband just randomly goes missing and she is left alone with his stepdaughter and nothing but a note from him that says protect her, obviously referring to her stepdaughter. Um, her and her stepdaughter don't really get along that well, but they really bond over trying to figure out what happened to her husband and her dad. It turns out that the company he worked for was very shady and that he was maybe involved in some of the shadiness. Um, so they're trying to figure out exactly how involved he was in the shadiness, where he went, and why he felt like he, his only option was to completely run away and abandon them. I just really love this book. This is probably the first thriller that's made me cry since Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, which if a thriller can make you cry because you just feel such emotion for the characters, that's a good damn thriller. That's all I have to say. I really love this book. It's probably one of my favorite books I read this year. Honestly, it was so good. It was so freaking good. I loved it. I would implore all of you to read it. Like, it deserved to win the Goodreads words which is so funny because I feel like I haven't heard a ton of people talk about it but it won so I'm like okay y'all right but <laughs> but I haven't read all the books in the category yet so I don't know if you're right right but I really liked this one a lot it was an easy five stars for me and I believe those are all of the books that I read in December and the one book that I read in November <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video hopefully I will read enough in 2022 to do regular monthly wrap-ups so definitely subscribe if you're not already you can also follow me on Instagram if you want to keep up with what I'm reading on the day today I would love to have you over there and yeah that's pretty much it uh let me know down below what the best book you read in December was and I will see you in the next one bye <music>